All right, welcome back to part three. Uh, when we left off, we had just talked about how Terrence had, um, if he had given 20% 20, uh, 20 away to his brother, then he must have kept 80% because 20, uh, 20 plus 80 is 100. So he must have kept 80%. All right, next one. There are 12 boys in a class of 20 children. What is the ratio of boys to girls in the class? All right, so let me cover this up so I can explain this step by step. Okay, there are 12 boys in a class of 20 children. What is the ratio of boys to girls? It doesn't tell you how many girls, but if you know that there are 12 boys, plus what number would give us 20 total children? Well, I'll use them just a mental math tells you that would be eight. So there must be 12 boys and there must be eight girls. So we know there's 12 boys plus eight girls equals 20. Now, we can write this ratio three different ways. First, we if we can write it like this. So that's 12 to 8, 12 colon 8, 12 over 8. However, we can simplify these. When we simplify them, we can divide them by 4. So we can divide each number by 4. 12, by three, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we rewrite each of these as a fraction or I mean, it's a simplified ratio. And whenever you have a ratio, you always want to write it in simplest terms. Okay, next, next one. Okay, use the coordinate grid to respond to the question below. All right, um, the point D, which is negative two, negative three, I'm sorry, negative two, positive three, that's right here, is on the coordinate grid. Which, which quadrant is point negative two, positive three. Well, if you remember, our um, coordinates are shaped like a C. We start here, and we go in a circle, and we end over here, just like a C. It'd have to be in quadrant two. All right, next one. Um, find the greatest common factor for each of the following ordered, uh, each of the following pairs of numbers. Okay, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to take a moment on this to show you the different ways to do this problem. All right, first one. I'm, I'm going to show you how, how to do this using the ladder method. This is the fastest and shortest way to do it. Here's 20 and 35. What number will go into both 20 and 35? Well, we know that, I know that 5 will. 20 divided by 5 gives us 4. 35 divided by 5 gives us 7. Our greatest common factor is the number that sits out on the side over here. So for this, our greatest common factor must be 5. Now the long way to do this problem for 20 and 35 is 20 and 35. All right. So times 1, I'm sorry, factors. What times what gives us 20? 1 and 20, 2, and 10, 4, and 5. There's all the factors. The factors of 35, 1, and 35, 5, and 7. There's your greatest common factor. All right. You can also Google this. Uh, uh, you can look this up on YouTube. There's lots of videos. Uh, look for the ladder method. The little, la, ladder, this is the ladder method. This is the traditional way. Look up some videos to see how to do these and try these out on, on your own. All right, next one. Right, that was day... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this one with you real quick. So hopefully you try this one. If not, try this and pause it, try this, and then see how you did. All right. So I'm assuming that you gave this a try. Now, for this one, what number will go into both 42 and 72? Well, you, you can always choose the lowest one. That, that will be okay. Uh, it takes a bit longer, but that's all right. So 2. So we divide 20, uh, 42 by 2. That gives us... 21, so we put 21 here, and 72 divided by 2 gives us 36. Uh, 
We can divide these again. These will, there is a number that will go in both 21 and 36, so I'm going to add another step to my ladder. Um, let's see. So the number that will go into both of these is 3. 21 will go is divided, 21 divided by 3 is 7. 36 divided by 3 is 12. Okay, there is no number that will go into both of these, so we can't continue more. We are done. Now, I can multiply my outside numbers. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 is my greatest common factor. All right, very good. Next one. What is the, we are on day 7 now. What is the area of the quadrilat quadrilateral below? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two different shapes because that's going to help us solve this problem. So I'm just going to break this up. You don't have to be perfect like this, but this just helps for the sake of this demonstration. All right. I have a rectangle and I have a triangle. Um, the rectangle I know is going to be length times width. The length of this rectangle is 12. The width of this triangle, of uh, this rectangle, is 5. Multiply 12 times 5 gives us 65, uh, 62, excuse me, inches squared. Very good. Now for the, uh, now for the triangle. We know that we are going to do, we, we are going to need to do base times height divided by 2. That's how we find the area of a triangle. The base of this triangle, well, let's do the, you know, okay, the base right here, if this side is 12, this side must be 12. So we know that the base is 12. Now the height, that's this part right here. We don't really know what this is yet. Know that the whole thing is 7. If this side is 5, this side must be 5. So if this is 5, this must be 2. Because 5 plus 2 gives us 7. So 12 times 2 divided by 2. 12 times 2 gives us 24 over 2. 24 over 2, or 24 divided by 2, gives us 12 inches squared. So we add 62 inches plus 12 inches. All right, next one. Becky is in years old, a number, years old. Her mom is four in plus, four in plus one years old. If Becky is seven years old, how old is her mom? Okay, well, we know that Becky is in years old, and it tells us that Becky is seven. So this is a substitution. Wherever we see n, we're going to put a seven. So we're going to rewrite our um, expression right here. In the place of n, we're going to put 7. We work out a problem. We come up with 25 years. Next one. Anthony is, is buying pecans at the local farmer's market. The cost of an 8-pound bag is $8.40. The cost of a 3-pound bag is $7.80. What is the cost of each Per pound. Here's our keyword. Per pound. We're looking for per pound. We are looking for unit rate. So when we do unit rate, we're going to be putting pounds over money, pounds over dollars. And what are we comparing? Well, we know that at eight pounds, um, eight pounds cost eighteen dollars and forty cents. So we're going to put eight pounds on top. And forty dollars, eight dollars and forty cents on the bottom. We know that one cost. We know we know how much one costs. So cross multiply and then divide. You can also just divide eighteen dollars and forty cents by eight. That would give you your unit rate. So you get two dollars and thirty cents. You can add a zero. That's fine. You can add as many zeros as you want, and it won't change the value. Of this number. So you're going to do, now you do the same with the other one, the three pound a bag for this much, and you determine which is cheaper. Oh, time for the next one. 